Hey there, teacher friends. I wanted to hop on here tonight to teach you some ways you can teach natural disasters to your students. Um, I think natural disasters are a lot of fun because it is something that ha has general interest for all of us. Um, wherever we live, we are prone to some sort of a disaster to happen near us. So there, that it will allow you to spark some instant curiosity in your students. Um, it, natural disasters also will follow the NGSS standards, which we know is super important to make sure that we are following in our curriculums. Um, by the end of grade five, uh, students should be able to know that the hazards are going to result from an earthquake, a volcano, um, something of that magnitude and human beings that cannot stop it. By the end of grade eight, students should be able to realize that there are some hazards that we can predict, like hurricanes, where we can kind of foresee um, how that they are forming and make predictions about where they're going to land. But there are other natural hazards that we really don't have the ability to do that with. And that would be like volcanoes or volcanic eruptions or earthquakes. While we do have technology that can help us track that and kind of figure out which areas they are more likely to happen, they are still a little bit unpredictable. Um, I have a master list of the next gen phenomena. So no matter what you are teaching, I have a list um, that I'm going to share with you in a Google Doc when I'm done with this, and it will give you a list and it hyperlinks to different phenomena that you can use in your classroom. Of course, you want to start your unit with some sort of phenomena. Um, some examples could be, um, I use one that has to do with mudslides because mudslides are unpredictable. So um, that is something that will usually spark some interest. There's also a video on there with elephants being able to warn uh, human beings about an upcoming tsunami that was going to happen. As we know, a lot of animals can sort of have that feeling and that instinct that a tsunami is about to approach and they will give warning signs whether or not we're listening to it. That's another issue. Um, and then there's also one that I like on the Yellowstone super volcano that you can look at. Again, I'm going to have a list, um, and this includes from K to 12 of all different phenomena that you can be using in your classroom. Um, I also like to go over some vocabulary words that you think your students are going to encounter that they may have trouble with. I think going over those vocabulary terms will help them uh, understand what you're talking about, number one, but also when they encounter those vocabulary terms, if they're reading independently, then they're already going to know what they are. So that kind of takes out the issue of them being able or needing to decode anything. So I also like to go over that. Um, I tend to start all of my units with a Quizlet. I don't necessarily go over the Quizlet when I start the unit, but I do have the Quizlet link in Schoology. That's our learning management system so that the students can use that at any point in time. And I think that really helps them um, understand the vocabulary, and then if there is ever any extra time in class, I will tell them to go on Quizlet. Usually I'll play it and um, I'll do the, the matching game, and then I have a challenge to see who can beat my score, and that really helps to get them engaged and get them to be practicing um, those vocabulary terms so that they understand them. Um, I think that this unit also really lends itself to allowing students to do some independent research or they can be researching in small groups. Um, since we are all prone to an actual disaster, you can have different groups um, research different natural disasters and then they can all present about them. You can have different um, questions that you want each group to answer about a natural disaster. And then whether you have the, the one student or you have the group of students that are learning about that you can have them make a quick google slide presentation um they can do a flip grid there's a lot of different things that they can do um you know with that research you can also make a web quest there are web quests that are available that you can use um but you can also just quickly make your own using a google doc 
that you then share with the students. And that WebQuest can just have links to specific websites that you think are appropriate for the students and then questions for them to answer. Um, if you are working where you are all remote or you have students like me, where some of the students are in the class, some of the students are not in the class, then you can always have breakout rooms. If you're using Google Meet, where you put some of the students that are, you have all of the students sign into the Google Meet, whether they're in the classroom or not, and then have set up breakout rooms where you can have a student in the classroom work with their student at home, and they can um, have the ability to work in cooperative groups without breaking any of the COVID restrictions that you may have. Uh, another thing you may want to include in your natural disaster unit are videos. Uh, our students are learning through videos. They find them very engaging. And there are so many short videos that you can use to start your lesson. Um, I have a, whole, a bunch of links. You can have links to, um, you can use videos that have live, um, you know, true natural disasters, or you can have one like the Dr. Binock show where he's just going over how a natural disaster occurs and um, what would cause one to happen and then what happens when you have a natural disaster in your area. Um, but I really like them because it's just bite-sized information that you can go over quickly with your students. You can find longer videos if you know that you're going to be out and there's going to be a substitute in your classroom. There's plenty of, of ways that you can use those videos. Um, and then knowing me, I love embedding literacy into science. So one of the cross-cutting concepts is cause and effect. And I think that naturally lends itself to natural disasters because you can have students research what causes an earthquake and then how does that earthquake affect an area? You can do that with any of the natural disasters. What causes a tsunami? How is that going to then affect the area? Um, and that really will allow students to have a better understanding of each type of natural disaster and what the different types of destru destruction that can happen from a natural disaster. Um, this also allows students to work on their critical thinking skills, their critical reading skills, if they're reading some sort of an article that has to do with a natural disaster. Um, and you can have them sequence the events of what causes a natural disaster, especially like a hurricane. You know, you can go have the students um, have set a step-by-step -step on how a hurricane forms. Um, the same thing with a tornado for those natural disasters that take a little bit more time. Um, you need a little bit more energy to go into them to really make them destructive. I think sequencing those events helps students to better learn about that natural disaster. And then finally, I always like to end the unit. You could also start a unit, but I usually like to, at the end, have some sort of hands-on activity. And many STEM activities lend themselves to this unit. Um, having students do something like creating um, a building and then you can have a hairdryer or something like that where you can mimic the hurricane force winds and see if their buildings blow down. Um, that could also be for a tornado. You can use either um, natural disaster for that. You can have students test different materials and how they would hold up to a tsunami to see if they are able to withstand the force of the tsunami, um, which many students don't realize is extremely forceful. Um, and then you can also have students do a project where they're researching the different natural disasters that may occur in their area. They can look at the data of the destruction that the disaster caused in, in their area, and then they can brainstorm either by themselves or in a group of different ways that they can make that area safer. So that if, you know, another hurricane came into that area, how are they going to be able to withstand it in a better way than they did before? Are there different materials that, that there are now that could be more cost effective in the end to be able to um, withstand that natural disaster? So these are some ways that I like to teach natural disasters. I do also have, I'm gonna give you a um, Google Doc, and then I also have a blog post that I really go into depth, um, teaching you all about these different ways to include this unit in your classroom. And there is a freebie on there 
where you can use um, generic cause and effect graphic organizers with your students um, to talk about the different causes and effects of natural disasters. So I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional questions. Um, thank you for spending some time with me and I will talk to you again soon.